What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands 3 video for you and in this one we're taking a look at week 2 of the Borderlands 10 year anniversary event and this week is Rare Spawn Week, which I am super stoked for. So for anybody not familiar, Rare Spawns in Borderlands 3 are named enemies that don't always spawn, which obviously then makes them rare. And these enemies have some pretty damn good loot usually. I've covered quite a few of these in individual videos, but let's use this video as a resource for the location for all of the rare spawns, what they drop, and how to farm them as quickly as possible. Now, like I said, normally these rare enemies don't spawn every time, but during this week, they will be guaranteed spawns and they'll have an increased chance to drop their unique legendary items. Be sure you're connected to the internet as this event is installed as a hotfix and not a patch, so you are required to be online for this. Another thing to note is that you do not have to be on any mayhem mode for these drops. They are not affected by mayhem level, and that only serves to help you get additional items that are not these specific drops. So don't be afraid to do non-mayhem during this event. That said, if you're on normal mode and you've beat the game, but want the enemies and loot scaled to your current level, then by all means do at least Mayhem 1 to make everything on level for you. So let's do this in order of location, planet by planet. There will be timestamp links down in the description that will take you directly to whichever enemy that you're looking for, if you prefer to skip right to that. These are not in the order in which you would encounter them while playing through the story, as that may vary from person to person. Instead, I thought it best to just keep them organized by planet and zone. So first up are the Demo Skaggins. This is the first rare enemy spawn, and like all the other enemies on this list, they can also be found on the bounty board and sanctuary whenever people on your friends list find them. They are located on Pandora in the droughts, just across the bridge jump, past this little tower, in this little enclosed area with a rock in the middle. They always spawn as a pair, and both can drop loot. Prior to the event, they appeared to not have an assigned legendary drop, but could world drop a variety of legendary loot. Now during the event, and possibly beyond, I'm not sure about this one yet, they can drop random legendary shields. The fastest way to farm these guys is to teleport back to the starting area of the droughts, grab a cyclone, jump the gap, and head back into this area. They resist fire, so use cryo or non-elemental weapons, and this is going to be an excellent way for you guys to get some amazing anointed legendary shields during this event, so I am going to be getting a bunch of those. Princess Tarantella is next. She is located also on Pandora in the Splinterlands. Your best bet is to spawn in at the Splinterlands Chop Shop Fast Travel and grab a vehicle. Head immediately to your right into this large open area and she'll occasionally spawn. She can drop the Hive, which is now a legendary rocket launcher, upgraded from being a unique blue in Borderlands 2. Aim for her abdomen as that is her crit spot. Also, be aware of the enemy vehicle spawns in the area as they can make this fight a lot more difficult than it needs to be. I'd recommend staying uh, in your vehicle for as long as possible to help make this fight a little bit easier. Also in the Splinterlands, we've got Road Dog. Now, Road Dog is a Overwatch Easter egg referencing Roadhog, obviously, and you can find him at this point on the map in the Splinterlands. Now, note the save station is right here. If you activate that, it'll make this a much easier farm since you just run down the hill, jump the fence, and get into the camp where he's located. Road Dog can drop the Red Line Shotgun, which is a pretty decent legendary shotgun, and uh, if you can get an anointed one during this event, then you're probably going to be set. Nothing tricky about this fight other than the other enemies in the area. Road Dog can hook and pull you in like Road Hog from Overwatch does, but he's a bit of a pushover for being honest. Still on Pandora in the Carnivora Zone, you can find a rack symbol up in the sky. Head to this location on the map, which is where you find the Rack Cave and a Batman inspired enemy named Rackman who can drop a legendary pistol called the Night Flyer, which has the hilarious effect of being able to take an enemy down to 1 HP but will never kill them. This is because of Batman's motto of one rule, he does not kill. So likewise, this gun cannot kill enemies. Rackman will teleport around the arena, but other than that, he isn't a hard kill. Just be aware of the other racks around the area during this fight. Our final rare enemy on Pandora is Sloth and Captain Thunk, a combo fight found at Conrad's Hold. Head to the turnstile area, and if you actually go through the building to the other side, there's a save station and vending machines, activate this 
to make the farm even faster. Now, Sloth can drop the It's Piss Grenade, which has the ability to wipe status effects off of you and your allies, and it can make enemies take 20% more damage for several seconds. This, to me, seems like the kind of grenade that will be perfect for team raid battles later on, so do yourself a favor and pick this one up. The toughest part of this fight is obviously the large amount of other enemies in the room attacking you from all angles. Focus down Sloth and Thunk as fast as you can and see if they drop the item. If you need a second win, try the non-badass Tinks in the arena. Note that Sloth and Thunk always spawn from this platform right here. On to Promethea in the Meridian outskirts is where you can find Borman Nates, a Norman Bates Alfred Hitchcock Easter egg located right at the beginning of this area from the fast travel. Just grab a Cyclone and hang a hard left, jump up the back of the elevator to save yourself some time, proceed to the middle of the uppermost platform, and Borman will occasionally spawn here. Borman can drop the legendary pistol called the Psycho Stabber, which has some of the best base melee damage in the game. Borman also has a beefy shield and health bar, so bring a shock weapon and a fire weapon to have the best luck with him. Also, don't forget to grab the rare chest in the room hidden right underneath of his platform right here. On to Lectra City, which is also on Promethea. Here you have two rare enemy spawns. The first one is not part of the rare spawn week, even though they are a rare spawn, and that is Wick and Warty, who can drop the legendary Feebert shotgun. Now, obviously, these guys are a Rick and Morty Easter egg, and if you start from spawn, you head slightly northeast on the map, going through this narrow pathway on the right. Just over this ledge, Wick and Morty will spawn. It seems that Wick is the only one that drops the Feebert. I could be wrong on this, obviously. Uh, the beginning fast travel is probably going to be your fastest starting point for this farm. Note that they do teleport around a lot, but otherwise they're not really that difficult. You will have a bunch of other robots in the area, though, that you have to handle. So, shouldn't be that hard, though, for you. Now, also in Lectra City is Orist Mickenforcer, located almost directly in the middle of the map, down in the subway area where you also find One Punch. He has a chance to drop the Masterworks Crossbow, which is a legendary sniper reminiscent of the Longbow from Borderlands 2. There are several save stations nearby, but the closest one that I found was here. So all you have to do is run down the hill, jump down into the subway, and go around this corner to get to him. He's an easy kill, so no tactics here. Just watch out for other enemies just around the corner from where he spawns, as you often will find badasses there. Next up, still on Promethea and Skywell 27, is Dinklebot. Now, unfortunately, Dinklebot, like Wick and Warty, is not on this list for the event, despite being a rare spawn. Dinklebot can drop a legendary Ludogram, which you can take to Crazy Earl, who will usually give you hot garbage for it. However, occasionally, Earl will give you a legendary, either the Lucian's Call, Butcher, or Wagon Wheel. It can take a lot of these Ludograms to get Earl to drop you what you want, though. So, in order to find Dinklebot, you need to head to this spot on your map and look for him to spawn right in front of this dump truck. He will spawn several other balls that fight for him, so be ready to handle them. The Force Troopers spawn at Atlas HQ on Promethea, and I have an awesome shortcut for you guys to use to farm these guys fast. After spawning in, head to the main courtyard area and hang an immediate left. Now, big thanks to one of my viewers on the stream today. They showed me that if you go to the second pillar right here and jump up from the shrubbery, the hedges or whatever, and then you can just scale right up here real easy, nice little shortcut. During the rare spawn anniversary event, these guys can drop random legendary class mods. This is going to be your absolute best and easiest way to farm legendary class mods. To beat these guys, your best approach is just to kill them as they jump down, if possible, since they tend to drop in one at a time. And that's going to be a far easier fight than dealing with five of these guys all at the same time. On to Eden 6 and our first zone features a Jurassic Park Easter egg, Endo Tyrant. The fastest way to get to him is to travel to Voracious Canopy and then turn around and go out the door to Floodmore Basin. This will put you right beside his spawn point. Now conversely, you can start from the fast travel where you meet Montgomery Jacobs for the first time and just jump off the side of that area down into this part of the map and then run over, but honestly the first method is much faster. Endo Tyrant can drop random customizations during this event, so if you're looking to complete your head, skin, trinket, or room decoration collection, come here and farm this big ass dinosaur. Also on Eden 6, in the Anvil, is the Mother of Grogans. This Game of Thrones Easter egg is located on the map here, basically right at the beginning of the map and to the left. To get here, you need to jump a gap and head into what looks like a sewer of some sort. Head all the way to the back and open the chest in the room. A couple of times I had to wait for a moment or two for these guys to spawn, so be aware of that. 
For this fight, I'd recommend focusing her down first and then work on the Grogans after. She acts like a badass enemy and seems to always have a rocket launcher anytime I go in there to fight her, which can make your life hell. During the rare enemy week, the mother of Grogans can drop random legendary artifacts. So if you're needing a good snowdrift or looking for good ways to boost your damage, resistance, or other perks, head here. It's a fast and easy farm. Up next at Jacob's Estate on Eden 6 comes a Battleborn Easter Egg. Now, for all the crap that Battleborn takes, it still remains one of my favorite games that I've done a playthrough of. El Dragon Jr., who is clearly a reference to El Dragon from that game, can drop the Unleash the Dragon Legendary Artifact, which has a really awesome perk. 100% incendiary chance for melee attacks. Now, obviously, this is an exceptional perk for Amara, but you might be surprised to know that all the classes can take advantage of this artifact's perk by using the Face Puncher Shotgun, which does melee damage when shooting. So combine those two items for maximum mob damage. To farm El Dragon Jr., the best approach is to pretend that you're doing the old Loot Tink farm, or that you're headed to Heckle and Hide and trigger the save point above El Dragon. Now every time that you want to farm him, you just have to jump down from here, and he will spawn at this waterfall. The main trick to this fight is don't let him punch you. One of my favorite Easter eggs in this entire game is Max a Trillion, an obvious reference to Maximilian from Disney's movie Black Hole, which was one of my favorite movies growing up. Max can drop the Humongous The Horizon TD or shotgun, which does pretty massive damage, so be sure to pick that up. To find him, you have to go a pretty long way. Basically, a voracious canopy, you have to stay to the right, head all the way down to the crashed spaceship. You're going to have to go all the way through it to the area where you fought Genevieve. Trigger the save station in the room right before where you drop in to fight her, and then head back one room to find Max. This fight is a little bit trickier than most on this list since he has fan blade arms that deflect incoming bullets. Try to stagger him with grenades or splash damage. Obviously, a flacker is exceptional here. And while he's staggered, try to whittle him down. Red Jabber can be found on the Eden 6 map Ambermire. If you use the fast travel to land in Rogue's Hollow, just run straight back through the map and you'll come to this place where there's a Jacob's chest and a platform on the left. Here is where Red Jabber will spawn. Now during the rare spawn week, he can drop a random legendary grenade mod, which makes this a fast, easy farm for all of you guys looking for hex grenades, red queens, and that new hotness, the firestorm. This fight, like most of these, isn't complicated, but if you're on Mayhem 3, then badasses will be everywhere here. So keep that in mind. The Rogue's Hollow fast travel is also the fastest route for this farm. There's a save station down and to the left from the opening spawn, but if you're using a slide speed relic, then just zipping straight ahead is faster in my opinion. Finally, we have the Unstoppable. This Marvel Comics juggernaut reference is on Eden 6 in the Ambermire map. Starting from the Rogue's Hollow spawn, head immediately left, jump over the ledge, and run forward, then slightly to the right. You'll come to this area where you see a walkway on the water and a save station right here. Trigger that save station to make subsequent runs faster if you're farming him. Follow the walkway past the vending machine, and you come to this little camp. The Unstoppable can spawn from one of these two doors. Keep in mind that he's a Goliath-type enemy, so shooting off his helmet puts him into enrage mode, and he can quickly level up by killing other enemies in the area. Nothing too tricky about this fight. Again, avoid shooting off his helmet, as that does not affect his drop rate. The Unstoppable can drop the Band of Citrax Shield, which can give you bonus damage when the shield is broken. It's a pretty cool piece of gear if you're looking for something like that, so go get you one. So there you have it guys, that is my complete guide to rare enemy spawns, what they can drop, and how to farm them all quickly. Hopefully the loot pools stay intact after rare enemy week, but if not, check for a pinned comment possibly updating who drops what. Most of these enemies already had their item in their drop pool, but the ones that can drop random legendary loot appear to be new additions that, like I said, I hope to see stick around. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please take a second to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and tap that bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.